Hey guys, it's the Electrical DIY Coach. Let's get after it. Today we're going to show you how to install a hot tub. Let's get to it. Hey guys, what's up? It's Perry, the Electrical DIY Coach. So today we're going to be installing a hot tub. So our greatest challenge for this install, as you can see, that all of these knockouts are full. So I'm going to show you guys how we're going to accomplish that. Okay guys, we're going to see what type of access we have. I've drawn my line. I've used that box to trace it and what you're going to do is, thank you for my faithful assistant, you're going to set it against the wall and trace it out and you're going to want to be careful as you do this because you're only going to want to stick the saw blade just the size of the drywall through the wall so you don't cut into any of the wiring. Guys, okay, So after looking up through here through my access hole, right here is going to be the best spot for me to make a new knockout hole. It's clear up above there. You just have to be very careful. Um, and I'm going to put a shield for metal shavings and have someone help me there. And I'm actually going to drill a brand new three quarter inch hole right there in the, in the top of the can. All right, guys. So I have set up my shields and I've got myself protected, ready to drill my hole. Guys, so we've got our hole knocked out. Just was meant to go there. And we are going to install our Romex connector and get ready to do um, fish a fish stick down for now. And I'll pull my wiring in a little bit. All right, guys, so I've got my Romex connector installed. I'm going to take my fish stick. In this case, there's actually a gap in the studs up there, so it's gonna allow me to shove up, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. All right, guys, it's about a one in a million shot. Typically, you never are able to just shove it up in there. First try, no hassle. There's actually a gap back here where you can see the depth here. There's a gap in between it and the other stud wall, so it's just like best case scenario. So we'll leave that in there and fish our wire later. All right, guys, so I've routed my path. I actually, if I can get a good shot here, can go right up through there with staples. And then I've drilled holes. You can see my shavings. I've drilled holes all the way through here. You are allowed to do cables 8, 3, and larger to the bottom of the stud. But honestly, with this height and with everything going on, I went ahead and drilled board holes. And then to get outside, I popped through right there. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so we're plotting our disconnect. We're required to be at least five foot from the water's edge and within sight. There's lots of codes regarding this for commercial and residential. This, I'm going to make sure that I'm five foot away. It's supposed to be within sight. The only place that I have to put it, because uh, there is no room at all, is I'm going to set it just down here. You're going to be able to see it. Worst case scenario, I have to put a little plaque right here that says emergency switch below or disconnect below, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. It's going to be pretty self-explanatory. You know hot tub disconnect right there there's really no other place to put it and what i'm going to do is pop that uh this one had the whip on it we've actually installed this one once this is the second time we've moved it and we're going to install it again at a different home um, and what we're going to do now is we are going to plot the disconnect so we can run our wire from the panel to here one thing i want to note with this being on a deck they have paid a professional carpenter to come in and install supports so just be very careful before this this tub is a cadillac um, you know, in top of the line, and you just have to be very careful. It's very weighty, and you just have to be careful for structural uh, means. We're actually going to be shooting our conduit down this way, and that heads back to that garage that we've been shooting at. All right, guys, so we're going to take this one inch car flex, and we are going to pop out of our hole here. We're going to have to junction. I'm trans uh, transitioning from Romex. Here's my hole. We're transitioning from Romex to THHN, THWN. So I'm going to, to the bottom of the, these joists, going to strap my conduit nice and straight and then pull my wire through. I'm going to teach you guys how to make a story pole and I'll show you what that is in just a second. Okay, so what a story pole is, is I'm going to put these straps on for this pipe. I'm actually just going to use this drill bit, but you can cut a piece of pipe, you can cut a piece of wire, you can use a stick from the grass, and I'm going to use this as a gauge to set my straps at the same distance every single time. So every single stud I come to, I'll use this and then screw my strap. I'll use this and then screw my strap. So when you look down this thing, it'll look crispy clean, nice and neat. Okay guys, I took my story pole first and took a marker and marked every spot. Then I went back through with the screws and the straps and pre-hung them all. So when I take my conduit up there, it's a whole lot easier to deal with. Um, also, uh, this just makes it easier for fastening and allows me to take this tool belt off and put my normal tool belt back on because this is my strapping uh, tool belt. So 
All right, let's get to it. Now for the wire. This hot tub requires um, a neutral, two hots, and a ground. Um, there are lots of different configurations. You need to check your model number. Here's the kicker, guys. If you do not put the GFCI breaker here at the home in the panel, you're going to be required to run four wire out to the disconnect regardless. You may only run three wires to the hot tub, but wherever that GFCI breaker lands, you're going to be required to have four wires there. So you do not have to have a neutral conductor for the GFCI breaker, but you do are required to have a neutral conductor where that GFCI lands in order for its neutral path uh, to function without any um, objectional current on the grounding path. And that's kind of a more complex video, but you're going to need four wires or a neutral and a ground at the location that you put to the, G the GFCI breaker. Okay, so we're getting ready to shove the fish tape through the one-inch conduit, and we are going to pull this wire in. First, all right, guys. So we pulled our fish tape through. Sometimes you have to shake and jiggle that pipe. It's it's tougher than you think, even though it's a straight run and such large pipe. How you make your wires up is like this. This is one way to do it. I'm going to separate them. I'm going to loop the left side around the left and the right side around the right, and then pinch it down with a pair of pliers or clines, and then I'm going to tape it up real nice. All right, guys. I'm going to teach you a taping method called the half lap. So you start right here, and you're going to do exactly like it sounds. You're going to lap half the way. So you get started and then lap half the way, and then lap half the way, and then so on and so forth, and you can half, half lap it. So this is probably not the best job, but you get the principle. You lap half of the tape on the last half, and then I usually go down, and then when, I'm, when it's a tough pull, you can work your way back up. There's lots of different ways to layer the wire um, to make it even more str even stronger and even more effective and then you can pull that tape tight pull the tape tight pull it tight and Then you're gonna want to tape that sharp end up and then back and then back All right guys, so I've got my wire pulled down to here. This is how I'm going to attach to the house I'm going to bore that hole out a little bit more slide this in the back I'll be able to slide my Romex directly through and then fire cock around that point this, these four points will allow me to screw. I'm going to transition over to three quarter. Bought a little transition, transition over to three quarter, just make it easier to adapt to the box. They do sell one inch boxes, um, but they're costly and this is just easier to work with. So that's going to look like that. All right, guys, so here is my disconnect. So I'm going to neaten all these wires up before we're done, but I'm going to land the two phase conductors right here. Every disconnect is different. Be super careful. Check the diagram. Make sure you know what you're doing. Ohm it out. Make sure you're not going to cross something. Um, this is my neutral bar. This one is, I was incorrect. Um, this one is a three wire hot tub, but I still had to bring four wires to the disconnect because I decided to put the GFCI breaker out here. So um, this is just three wires to the hot tub. So you will not land a wire on the neutral of the the breaker but you do land the pigtail to the neutral bar then i've got my ground bar here and make sure it's connected to the can make sure the can is bonded and then i've got everything nice and neat and strapped coming up through here so i've decided to move it up on the deck just so we didn't ha need any special permission it's a little bit lower than i like but it's to code and it's safe and it's with uh, farther than five foot with insight so i'm happy with everything so we'll get this thing wired up and then we're gonna check the hot tub all right, guys, the 2017 code requires that if there is a torque spec that you use a torque screwdriver like this or a torquing device. So I'll put a link in the description below. I like to torque all the connections. It just takes the guesswork out of it. I really fought it at first, but it's really been one of the best things because then I know it's tight. And if something were to ever happen, you know, we did everything that we were supposed to do. All right, so we got our Romex pulled in. After lunch, we're going to fish it in. Nice and neat through here. Keep your holes straight. We had to arch up and over. I've got it just loop right there. Gonna shove it outside, pull the slack staple nice and neat, and then we'll make up that joint outside. Give a wanna give a shout out to the wife real quick. This was the lunch pack for today, so just very thankful. Alright guys, so we got our conductors in the can. You just get everything the best you can on uh, a panel. I focus on getting it in there safely over looks when it is installing into old panels but we try to do both and then i noticed that there were i don't know six or eight knockout fillers needed in the bottom we're going to fill those up before inspection so these are neat they fill the hole to keep it from, you know fire safe fire from fire draft i do want to give a little tip 
that you often, let's see if I can get the camera here, you often have to take your strippers or your clines and bend these down to get them in. And then sometimes you have to push them back out to get them to hold depending on your scenario. So those are pretty neat things. They sell them in all different sizes. It's called a KO filler or a knockout filler. All right, after box fill consideration, I went with a two-gang box, made my junction up in here, transitioned from Romex to THHN or THWN. Awesome. Okay, so this one was pre-wired where we had disconnected it from another home and then a company moved it over here and we reset it. We were able to pop right through the floor, strap right to the bottom and come up over there. Now I just want to check the inside because it's been moved. I want to make sure it's tight enough. So this one is a Cadillac. It has a push button. Other ones you have to kind of beat and pry off, but we're going to get inside here and I'll show you guys around a little bit. All right, guys, we're going to get into this jacuzzi box. Here's the nameplate. They're not always listed right there. This is a really nice one, so they are. I do want you guys to um, just, just get your instruction manual, make sure you have your model, and then follow the manufacturer's uh, recommendations of you know how to do it you know it's uh it's not rocket science you just follow the code book and you follow the manufacturer specifications it's a 110.3b issue if you've not checked out our electrical code coach channel we will we give you tons of tools on tips and the code and different things and also we have a free 10-week licensing program that you can check out you can take it absolutely for free so i just want to see you guys win all right so you just have to study your model there is my grounding connection and here are the two phase conductors um, I you know, made sure it was tight again from the move and you just have to watch this can be wired a bunch of different ways the can, these can be configured different ways typically your spa company will configure this and you'll just wire it according to uh, the specifications so just you know just be careful with what you do and uh, keep grinding